So I'm back, and you can see it's generating a normal map, the world space normal map. And now it's going and it's starting to make that ambient occlusion map. So you can see it kind of just kind of go through like a little bit of a kind of like a snake and a worm just kind of each eaching its way through uh, the render. And it's a pretty cool process to watch. So I'll let that finish the ambient occlusion map. Now it's making the cavity map. So it's almost like um, the ambient occlusion, but it's just got a little bit more detail in it. So it's generating that right now. Now that it's done, you can see uh, X normal comes in there, stops it, and then all you got to do is hit close up here at the top of the preview uh, box, and then open up the directory, and then you can see your maps right there. So the cavity and the ambient occlusion are slightly different in detail. So it depends when you when you want to start throwing everything into your uh, into like your rendering program or marmoset or your game engine you can use this as a nice little map to add a little bit more detail and we will definitely use that a little bit later on and then here's that world space normals that we need to use alright so at this point we're going to take our world space normal map and our texture and drop them into Photoshop to do some color correction and then also our detail map to make a displacement uh, for extra little details inside a ZBrush. So we'll show that in the next uh, part. Now we have Photoshop up. Let's bring in our color map to start color correcting it. So move this over to the side again you can always go to file open and find your files to import that way but I like to drag and drop into Photoshop so here's my directory here's my texture that I made in Agisoft I'm gonna drag this over and then we're gonna go to X normal and where I made that world space normal map and again you'll notice right away that there's gonna be different sizes because I made the world space normal map at 2k and then the actual texture map at 4k but that's not that big of a deal uh, at this moment because we're only using this map as a way of using as a color color selection or a selection to help color adjust the top and the bottom of our box or object so I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this up to the top corner snap it in and then I'm going to grab this bottom corner and then snap it to the bottom right down here. Again, if you want to be able, if you don't have the snapping features turned on, make sure you go to view and make sure you turn on snap for that. Okay, once that's in there, hit enter. It puts it down. Now we need to actually make our selections that we want to use for our color correction. So we want to go to select up here at the top and use color range. And color range allows us to select colors on our image and it will make a selection out of that range so it's pretty cool so I'm gonna go to the bottom of the box and select that and then fuzziness allows us to fine-tune variable colors that are close or closely associated to the color we picked with our little eyedropper tool so you can see this little eyedropper tool we move around and we can select certain values with that and then this fuzziness allows us to grow our selection. So about 98, 99, it looks pretty good for what we want. And then I'm gonna hit okay. And then you can see the little marching ants and that's saying that Photoshop is now a selection. And then we're going to use the little eyeball tool right here uh, for the world space normals layer and hide it. And you can see that selection has now dropped down to our background image. And I'm going to come all the way down to the Layers panel. I'm going to click on this 
black and white circle right here click on it and I'm gonna pick hue and saturation and right away you can tell that it's generated a mask from our selection and it applied the hue and saturation so for this image to fix this I need to increase a little bit of the saturation and then decrease some of the lightness so that's helping but it's not getting there all the way we can cr over crank them and try to really get close but it never really gets perfect we actually need another tool to help us with this so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure I've got my mask selected I'm gonna go to channels and then I'm gonna make sure that the mask is selected at the bottom of the channels and then I'm gonna come down here and there's this little icon right here and it's gonna say uh, convert ma uh, channel into mask I'm gonna click on that and there there's our little marching ant selection back up again I'm gonna go back to layers and then I'm gonna come all the way down and go down to adjustment layers again and I click on it and this time I'm gonna pick vibrance and then I'll click on vibrance make sure vibrance options are turned on I'll go to the vibrance the top slider and then kind of crank that up right about there and that's really starting to make it look good right there about 70 is where it's starting to really start to match the surrounding uh, parts go back to hue and saturation and then you can fine-tune the saturation a little bit and the brightness or the lightness that's looking pretty darn close right there so again I used hue and saturation and vibrance to get that now let's do this for the top of the box so same procedure uh, make sure I turn world space norms back on click on that go to select color range this time I'm gonna select the top of the box so right here I'm, I'm gonna select one side of the box and if you take a good look at this there actually is a little bit of a gradient from a darker green to a lighter green so this is not gonna work out perfectly for us in the current settings so I'm going to select one side on the left side of this box so that's a little bit darker green and what I'm going to go to is back to the color range and there's this little eyedropper tool right now that says add more points so basically you're adding more uh, color values to the selection so I'm going to add a sample click on that and then I'm going to click the other side which is the lighter green and now I'm selecting this whole range with this within this gradient on the world on the uh, world map and now I can play with the fuzziness a little bit you know it's probably you're on the night you know 90s are gonna work pretty good for us then hit OK there's the selection that it's made I'm gonna hide the uh, world space normals go back down to layer adjustments and then the same thing hue and saturation and I'm just going to increase the saturation a little bit drop the lightness and then I'll go back to the channels make sure the mask is selected for the bottom there and then I'll go turn mask into selection there it is it's back up again go back to the layers at the top and then apply using the layer adjustments vibrance and now I crank up that and it looks like I need to drop the lightness in the hue and saturation I'll click on that and oop, wrong one I need to collect the one on top there we go there we are and then now oop, it looks like the ones it's the ones on the bottom here we go here we go and now I'm gonna drop the lightness just a little bit there maybe drop the saturation just a bit and there you go now I've gone in there and I've color corrected the color map from Agisoft and that's just a great way of using the world space normals to do that color correction 
So now that we've done this, we probably want to save it. So just in case you need to go back to this file and change something. So save that out. Uh, the next step is to actually make our detail map for our displacement. So we're going to use the details from this map to actually make a really sharp uh, detail map that we can add even more detail inside of ZBrush, which was, is really cool.